today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the Dorset coastline. This is um, a case study as part of the Distinctive Landscapes Unit. So today what we're going to do is we're going to know the coastal landforms which are found along the Dorset coast. We're going to explain how geology and climate impact these coastal landforms so that you can consider the role that humans have also had upon this coastline. So where is the Dorset coast? If you look at the map of the UK on the right hand side of the screen, you can see where the county of Dorset is located, highlighted in red. So we're focused on that coastline to the south of this county. And if you look across to the map on the left hand side, you can see some of the key landforms and features of this coastline. Hopefully you recognise some of them, if not all of them, but we will be talking about some of the key landforms along this coastline over the next few slides. So the first landform we're going to look at on the Dorset coastline is Swanage Bay. Now Swanage Bay has formed on a discordant coastline which means that we've got alternating bands of rock, of hard and soft rock, which can be seen in the diagram on the left hand side. So the bay area is soft rock whereas either side of this bay area we've got two headlands uh, made up of harder rock. Okay. And at the south side of the bay, it's just worth no making note of the fact that there is a lack of vegetation, which means that this can lead to mass movement as the vegetation is not there to stabilise the soil. OK, so the next landform we're going to look at again is an erosional landform and an, ex an example of a stack. OK, so this stack has formed in a headland, which is referred to as the foreland on this coastline. OK, and it's formed as a result of an arch at the end of the headland collapsing to leave this pillar of rock called a stack. And the name of this particular stack is called Old Harry, which can be seen at the end of the foreland in the image on the right hand side. Just worth noting that a couple of processes are constantly acting upon this headland, wearing it away. And these are salt and carbonation weathering. These are the two dominant processes acting on this foreland. The third landform you need to know is Dirdle Dor, perhaps the most famous landform found along the Dorset coastline. So Dirdle Dor is an example of an arch and this arch is formed on a hard limestone headland. OK, so it's formed as a result of a cave being widened and deepened over time through processes such as hydraulic action and abrasion until eventually the cave breaks through the headland, which has formed this natural arch. Processes which are acting on Dirdle Dor are a range of different types of weathering, mechanical, chemical and biological. The final landform you need to know about is a depositional landform called Chesil Beach. Now Chesil Beach is an example of a tombolo. A tombolo is a type of spit that extends out to sea and connects and joins with an island. In this case it connects to the Isle of Portland. Now remember that spits grow and form as a result of longshore drift carrying material along a coastline until there is a change in shape in the headland resulting in material being deposited into the sea and over time this particular spit has joined this island, the Isle of Portland. Okay so we've looked at some of the key landforms that exist on the Dorset coastline. What we're going to do now is we're just going to think about how different factors are affecting this uh, coastline through erosion and weathering. Now, it's important to note the first box that the prevailing wind is from the southwest. OK, so we've got a southwest prevailing wind which carries warm, moist air across the Atlantic Ocean. And this can bring with it stormy weather, large destructive waves, which increases hydraulic action and abrasion. Okay. Prolonged heavy rain during stormy periods can cause clay to become more unstable, which can lead uh, to an increased risk of mass movement. Okay. And rain also makes the chalk and limestone vulnerable to weathering processes such as carbonation weathering. Salt weathering is also dominant, a dominant form of mechanical weathering, which happens particularly in the summer. And this leads to the buildup of salt crystals in the rocks. Uh, sorry, in cracks in the rock, which can cause rock to break apart. All right, and hard rock is also weathered more slowly, 
through chalk and though chalk and limestone is more vulnerable to erosion by solution. We know that this is a discordant coastline predominantly alongside the Dorset coast and therefore soft rock like sandstone and clay are easily eroded by hydraulic action and abrasion and this is particularly, particularly the case during this stormy weather. Freeze fall weathering is less common okay, because the Dorset coastline is located in the south of the UK but it can happen during particular cold, particularly cold winters. So we're now going to start to think about human activity along the Dorset coastline. Now, in terms of coastal management, there are three main types of coastal management that you need to know about, and these all occur on Swanage Bay. The first one you need to know about is this concrete seawall, which can be seen on the left hand side of this photograph. Seawalls reflect waves back to sea. However, they can create a strong backwash, which removes sediment from the beach. Also, they can prevent cliffs from being eroded, so there's no new material being added to the beach, which can over time lead to the beach decreasing in size. The second type of coastal management you need to know about is groins. Groins are these sort of wooden barriers that you can see stretching out at a 90 degree angle. They work by trapping material uh, transported by longshore drift, um, which increases the width of the beach. Now these were built in 2005 and 2006. However, one criticism of groins is that they've starved areas of sediment and sand further down the coastline. The final type of coastal management is beach replenishment. Now beach replenishment was carried out in 2005 and 2006 again, and sand and shingle for this was dredged from Paul Harbour to the east of the Dorset coastline and this was directly added to the, to the beach to try and make the beach wider and taller, adding more protection for the coastline. Now this uh, form of management strategy is effective, however it needs to be repeated every 20 years um, at a cost of £5 million. Some human activity along the Dorset coastline has actually led to an increase of erosion and weathering. An example of this is the quarrying of limestone along uh, the Isle of Portland and west of Chesil Beach, which has exposed large areas of rock, making them more vulnerable to weathering, in particular chemical weathering. Gravel removal um, from Chesil Beach also took place up until the 1960s. And finally, tourism. Tourism um, has led to lots of people walking along these coastal paths. Uh, which has led to actually coastal erosion occurring and this has exposed underlying soil and rock meaning that again it is more vulnerable to weathering and erosion. Thank you for watching this revision session on the Dorset coastline. What I suggest you do now is you stop the video and you have a go at these practice questions on the screen.